In the previous several lectures, we discussed a device known as a solenoid. Now we're going to examine a modified version of a solenoid known as a toroid. So a toroid is essentially a solenoid that is bent into the shape of a circle. So let's suppose we are given the following solenoid which consists of n number of loops of wire. And our loops of wire carry an electric current given by I. Now if we take our solenoid and we bend our solenoid into the shape of a circle, we get the following diagram. And this modified version of our solenoid is known as a toroid. Now in our discussion on our solenoid, recall that the magnetic field inside our solenoid forms lines that are straight. So our magnetic field lines inside our solenoid are essentially straight lines. And that basically implies that the magnitude of our magnetic field inside at the center of our solenoid is approximately uniform. It's constant and it's given by the following equation which was derived in the previous lecture. So we said that the magnitude of our magnetic magnetic field in the center of our solenoid is equal to the permeability of free space multiplied by n, the number of loops of wire multiplied by i, the electric current in those wires, divided by l, the length of our solenoid. So now we're going to examine the magnetic field inside our toroid. So what is the magnetic field? What is the equation? that will give us the magnetic field inside a toroid. So we're examining this region inside our toroid. Now recall that the magnetic field lines inside a solenoid are straight lines. But if we bent our solenoid to form the toroid, those magnetic field lines will also bend. In fact, the magnetic field lines inside a toroid will form concentric circles that will go all the way around. Now, to actually determine the magnetic field as a result of the electric current in the wires of our toroid, we have to apply Ampere's law. So we apply Ampere's law and choose a closed pathway that runs within the toroid all the way around as shown in the following cross section region. So we essentially slice our toroid and we get the following diagram. So in this region our electric current is coming out of the page and in this region our electric current is looping back into the page. Now we choose the following pathway around our toroid which happens to be the same pathway that is made by our magnetic field line. So now we cut up our pathway into infinitely small segments given by DL which are parallel to our magnetic field B. Now by the symmetry of our chosen circular pathway, our B around the pathway is exactly constant. So now we're ready to apply Ampere's law. Ampere's law basically states that the closed integral of the dot product of the vector B in our infinitely small segment DL is equal to the product of our permeability of free space and the enclosed electric current. So let's begin by evaluating the left side of Ampere's law. So this quantity is equal to the following. So by definition of dot product, the dot product of these two vectors is equal to the product of the magnitude of these two vectors multiplied by the cosine of the angle between them. Now, because DL is parallel to B, that basically means that the angle between them is zero. And cosine of zero is one, so this becomes one. Now also notice that our B is chosen in such a way that our B around our circular loop is constant. So B is a constant and we can take it out of our integral as we see in the following region. Now, 
we're integrating about a closed pathway. So let's suppose we begin at the following point, which is chosen to be zero. And we have to loop all the way around. So that means this distance is the circumference of our toroid. So if the radius from this point where we're examining our magnetic field to the center of our toroid is given by r, if this distance is r, then that implies the beginning point is zero and the final point is 2 pi r, which is simply the circumference of our toroid in this region. Now, so we bring our b because it's a constant and we can solve this integral and we get the following result. So we evaluate our integral from 0 to 2 pi r and we get that the left side of Ampere's law of this equation is equal to b, our magnetic field, multiplied by 2 pi r, our circumference. Now because the electric current enclosed inside this chosen region is equal to the number of loops and multiplied by the electric current, we can take this and replace it with n multiplied by i. So the right side of Ampere's equation becomes mu naught multiplied by n times i, and that is equal to b multiplied by 2 pi r. So now we solve for our magnetic field, and we see that the magnetic field is equal to mu naught, the permeability of free space multiplied by n, the number of loops of wire inside our toroid multiplied by i, the electric current inside the wires of the toroid divided by 2 pi r, where r is the radius at the chosen point. So notice that the magnetic field inside the toroid is not constant like it is inside our solenoid. So it is largest along the inner edge where the radius is smallest and it is smallest along the outer edge where the radius is largest. In other words, it depends on the radius that we choose. So at points closest to the outer edge, our R is largest and B is smallest. Likewise, at points closer to the inner edge, the magnetic field inside the toroid is largest because the chosen R is smallest.